All right. Well, I am at the Regina Flying Club, and I have ran into Audrey Kokohovic, and she is the general manager here and uh, has been so for about a year. How are you enjoying it? I absolutely love it. Flying is my passion, so I'm having a ball here. Now, you had mentioned that you, you are a pilot. I am. I've been flying for hmm, over 20 years now. I actually learned how to fly before I got my driver's license. That is funny. Now, uh, we're here today because you had mentioned in a phone call that there is actually a shortage in pilots. There is, and actually we're feeling a big crunch in Canada, especially for instructors and small charter operations, because the airlines are taking a lot of the experienced people that are coming from these areas and going into the airlines. So there's a real crunch where we're needing instructors to be able to help teach these people to become pilots. So if someone, because I see very small planes in, in here, um, if someone did want to take the course, um, what is their next steps? So what they have to do is just if they want to come visit the Regina Flying Club, we've got all the information laid out for them. Uh, to get a private pilot's license, you need to be a minimum of 17 years of age. And then Transport Canada requires that you have a minimum of 45 hours of flight time. So we offer the ground school here and the flight instruction and they become pilots after that. And really, you don't have to own a plane. I mean, you have planes for everyone? We do, and you pay a membership here at the Flying Club, so that covers you on our insurance to be able to fly an airplane with an instructor. Yep. So you do have a ground school coming up in September this year, and how many people do you, can you take in a ground? Is there a sort of a maximum that you can take and, and anything like that? Well, our next ground school is September 10th, and it's Monday and Wednesday nights, 7 till 9, and really... A cap probably would be about 25 students that our classroom could hold, but we're game for more. So if someone took, you know, they, they've put in their hours, they've taken the course, and they, they want to do a pilot as a career, and they don't want to go into the commercial, you know, big planes, what are the options for them? Oh, there's many. They can go into bush flying. Uh, they can go and do charter work. They can become instructors. Uh, there's just, there's so many opportunities. Crop dusting being that it's Saskatchewan and lots of farms, crop dusting is a big one. Yeah. And do you ever help uh, any of the pilots ever get jobs? Do you know of all the opportunities out there? Oh, there's loads of opportunities. You couldn't ask for a better time right now to be in aviation. Uh, there's just, you get a license, you have a heartbeat, you can go get a wow. job now. It wasn't that case when I got into aviation 20 years ago. Uh, you had to have at least a minimum of 1,000 hours to 1,500 hours before someone would look at you to hire you. Now you can complete your license and you can get a job. So how many members do you have here at the Regina Flying Club? Approximately 200 members. And is that Regina Flying Club, Regina and surrounding area? Is there one in Saskatoon or other places in Saskatchewan? We are the only Regina Flying Club in Saskatchewan. Uh, we're the only school in Regina, but there are other schools in, in Sa Saskatoon. So just because uh, I really want you to take me up in a plane today, before we do that, I just want to talk about the ground school again. How do people get more information? Because I think you've really given some great information. I think a lot of people would be interested because I came here today thinking I, maybe I should become a pilot because it would be really amazing. But how do people, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, they can go to our website. Uh, and the other thing is we have Facebook as well. So social media, we post everything there as well. So you can look us up or simply come for a drive. We're located right at the airport, so it's a good way to be able to check things out, see airplanes, see what our facility looks like, just like as if you're going to a university. Well, that sounds easy. So can we go maybe get in a plane? Most definitely. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so we were gonna go up in the plane, and I'm not. I'm in the pilot seat, but unfortunately, the uh, the ceiling has come down. Is that what you call it? That's right. The ceiling has come down, and we can't go up in the plane. But we get to sit in a plane, and uh, Audrey's gonna tell me a little bit more about what all this is. So I'm gonna hand the mic over to Audrey, and then I'm gonna put my hands on the controls because this just looks fun. Hold on. All right. Okay. Okay. So the primary flight controls <laughs> of the aircraft are we have the ailerons. So with the control column here, if you move that left and right. And if you look out the window, you'll oh. see the ailerons are moving. And you'll look to the other side, and it's going in the opposite direction. Okay. So that's what turns the aircraft. Okay. Then if you pull the control yeah. column out and in, and if you look behind us at the elevator, you'll see that the elevator is oh. going up and down. And that's the pitch movement of making us go up and down. Okay. 
Now, if you put your feet on the pedals below and push on those, you'll notice if you look at the back as, uh, oh, again, you'll see the rudder moving and that produces a yaw movement. So it helps coordinate everything when you are turning the aircraft. Oh, so I got a couple things to do while I'm- Multitasking. This and this and which bottle. Okay, all right. All right, so that is the primary movements That's it. of the aircraft. <laughs> But there's all these things. The oh. time. I got that. <laughs> That's minor details. It's not even right. <laughs> uh, we've got, uh, of course, your attitude indicator, which is also with like the movement. Like if I have a bad attitude? Yeah, we like to correct those okay. here at the Flying Club. <laughs> I'm even right now, I guess. <laughs> we have our, our altimeter, which tells us how high we are. Okay. We have our heading indicator to know the direction that we're going. And we have a vertical speed indicator, which is telling us how fast we're climbing or descending. And then the, the other instrument, primary instrument, when you're scanning is your turn coordinator to know whether or not you're coordinated. So do you ever get in a plane and then if, if they do a turn, do you ever get confused at which way's up? Uh, is that what that's for? No, no. Uh, but if you are flying, if you are flying via instrument on, only, yeah. uh, your big thing is you want to be scanning your instruments so that you don't get yourself into that situation. So scan is a big thing when you become a pilot. All right, well, that is it. We are at the Regina Flying Club, and we have been introduced to what's going on here and that there is a shortage of pilots in Saskatchewan and around Canada, right? At all over the world, actually. All over the world. So, so many opportunities for you. So if this is something that might interest you, come down to the Regina Flying Club and uh, you know what, just check them out. Come talk to the staff here. Lots of instructors, see the planes. And uh, this is amazing to be in one. I have never been in a plane before, so this is really cool. But come check them out. There is a ground school starting September 10th here in Regina and lots of opportunities for you. And those opportunities, they know about. So Audrey's the GM here. She will let you know of everything that is available and opportunities around the world. Sound about right? Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, next time, maybe we'll get to go up in a plane and we'll film because it'll be crazy and they would let me drive, which would just be crazy. But thanks. We'll see you soon.